Welcome everyone, this is David as usual. What is not usual is the place that I'm staying at. Um, I didn't bring my microphone with me. I'm going to be staying here for a couple of days. So um, this is one of the few videos I'm going to be making where the production quality is going to be low because it's not going to be, a, I don't know, a PowerPoint presentation with quotes that helps me keep the, keep the presentation structured. But I'll try my best if there's background noises or anything like that coming from the phone microphone. There's nothing I can do about it. So if there's issues about the phone or if there's issues from the place I am at, like people are speaking outside or whatever, again, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And secondly, uh, please do pray for Turkey uh, for due to the forest fires, but also um, there's forest fires in other countries as well, like the Medi in the Mediterranean, so like Greece, right? So I would appreciate it if you could pray for um, Western Turkey, which is also known as Greece. But also don't forget to pray for Eastern Greece, which is also known as Turkey. So let us begin with this video right now. The body-soul paradigm uh, used in Christology. And what, is, what does it mean? The body-soul analogy, in short, means that just like how human nature is out of a body and a soul, Christ is out of two natures, divine nature and human nature. And so we have one Christ. This is the very basic you know, baby level explanation. And it's helpful, right? This analogy is helpful because first of all, it explains how Christ is one while he has two natures uh, or he's out of two natures. And it also explains how you can have seemingly contradictory properties uh, like materiality and immateriality or infinity and infinity uh, coming into union together and still, you know, this not being illogical, right? So this is kind of one of the polemics people use is... Um, you can't have two contradictory contradictory properties in one person. Well, actually, you can. Right? Human beings are material and immaterial at the same time. Uh, it's just that our body, right, is material. Our soul is immaterial. In the case of Christ, again, his divine nature is immaterial, and his human nature is, you know, in his body is material, and his soul is immaterial, right? Or that his divine nature is omnipresent, but his human nature is present in only one location at a time. That's kind of the basic explanation. I can go much more in depth about how this entails, but I, again, I want to keep things basic here. Another thing that is very useful for is that in the case of human nature, the soul interpenetrates the body. Likewise, in the divine nature, in its divine energies, interpenetrates the human nature. So there's a lot of different, very useful things uh, this analogy provides us in helping us understand Christ. But what I want to do now is kind of get into the other Christological views and interpretations on how different Christologies look at the union between body and soul. So we're going to be looking at three different Christological views, the Nestorian view, the Monophysite view, and then the Orthodox view. Uh, the Nestorian understanding of the body soul analogy is that they will say that there are two two complete natures, and they form one human nature. Likewise, there are two complete natures, divine nature and human nature. Therefore, there is, you know, one Christ, right? But when, when the Nestorian speaks of a complete nature, they speak of the nature with its hypostasis. And so the Nestorian really fails to properly distinguish person and nature. And really, they kind of reduce nature and person together. And so nature has its has to have its own hypostasis. The monophysite uh, says, well, actually, the, the analogy is quite simple. Um, just like there's one nature after the union between body and soul, there's only one nature after the union between divine nature and human nature. It's very simple, right? Sounds kind of too simple. Too, it sounds too perfect. Right? It's very simple. Uh, and so therefore, there's only one nature in Christ. So how do we kind of distinguish? How do we correct these two views? Um, Leontes of Byzantium says that there are, that monophysitism and Nestorianism are two kind of extreme views, and orthodoxy is the mean between them. And there is a sense in which he's correct, but mostly he's incorrect. And the main reason is because the, the, these two Christ Christologies are completely structurally different. So now if you want to hear and listen to a detailed exposition on why these two Christological views are wrong, 
This is not the video. This is a basic level video. I have two long videos, one on Venestorianism and one on monophysitism. And I have multiple videos on monophysitism, to be honest. Sorry. Uh, you can watch them because I talk about their presuppositions and all that kind of stuff. But on a basic level, we are completely structured di different. And so we're not on that on that level, right? So we're not the mean between them, really. We're, we're something that's completely different on its own compared to them. So the two presuppositions we will consider ourselves different on is that we don't believe that duality implies division, whereas both of them really believe that. Then uh, Theodoret of Kyros, for example, says that um, says that union implies divisibility, right? What is united can be divided. Sounds like a Sounds like a song title made by a divorced uh, singer. What is united can be divided, like something like that. Um, and then you have on the monophysite side, you have Severus of Antioch, who says that duality dissolves unity. Right? So duality completely destroys the idea of a unity. That means that if something is two, it is not united. And so if Christ is two natures, he cannot be united. He has to be two persons in that scheme. That's why they reject two natures in Christ. So we don't agree with those presuppositions. Now, why and so shall I, again, I go on to this in detail in those videos. I'm not going to get into that. But suffice it to say, we are completely different in that regard. The way we will see it, for example, in light of the body-soul analogy, is we will look at... Uh, we will say, for, for, for instance, that in human nature, in a human being, he still has two natures in him, body nature and soul nature. You know what? Like, when I, if I'm drinking this water right now, it's not Mr. Water. If all the subscribers know who Mr. Water is, but... So, what did I do just now? I just drank water. What is drinking property? My body. Do we say my body drank? No, that will be stupid. But... You know, drinking is not really proper to the, the soul doesn't really, it can only merely participate in that at, at, at most. The idea is that um, I, through my body, drank water just now. And so the, I possess the full characteristics of my body nature and my soul nature. And so likewise, in the case of Christ, he possesses the full characteristics of divine nature and human nature. Now, the Monophysite might kind of come here, uh, criticize this and say, well, we agree that he has the full characteristics of both natures, but we say he's one, right? And if you're going to argue that he, you know, that, uh, he, you know, Christ is two natures because of there's a, the natures are distinct after the union, the human nature has to be two natures. Well, as I said, we don't disagree with that kind of a view, actually. St. Gregory the Theologian says that uh, human nature is of a twofold nature. It's a twofold nature. Ironically, Severus of Antioch quotes him on that, but the way he interprets it is completely very, honestly, very stupid. And I will explain why. He, his interpretation is, well, it's, it's twofold because it is out of two natures before the union, but after the union, human nature is one. Okay, why is this wrong? Well, because St. Gregory the Theologian, later on, says that because human nature is two natures, well, our salvation is also of a twofold nature. That, that twofold nature includes the water of baptism and the grace of the Holy Spirit in the baptism, right? So through one event, you have two, uh, you know, really kind of modes of salvation. One is the physical water and the one is spiritual, Holy Spirit. And so, it's not wrong to speak of human nature as two natures, but we refer to it as one nature. Why do we do so? St. John Damascus says that human nature refers to human species. So, uh, when we speak of human nature, we're speaking of the whatness of a thing. We're not speaking of a, um, you know, a thing, right? What, is, what thing is it or what thing does it have? So when we look at a man across the street, we would point at them and, and say, you know, oh, that's a, that's a body soul. You know, who uses that term, man? Just say, that he, just say he's a man because that's a man, right? Man across the street, street that's a man. Um, but that, 
So, so it refers to him as a species. So Christ is of two species, human species and divine species, but he is not, uh, right, he's, he's, he's two species, basically. So the two natures refer to two species. But if you want to be technically correct, you know, if you want to be very really technically correct, you can say he's three natures. You can also, you know, if you want to be very technically correct on everything, you can also refer to a cha chair as a as a substrate uh, of wood that has a shape including things that look like four legs which <laughs> help uh <laughs> i don't know have some kind of like a floor on top of it like that on top of the four legs and a straight structure that allows for a human back to stand straight as they sit or you can just say chair like a normal person okay so that's kind of the explanation that we will give in opposition to that now i want to kind of get into the little bit of the the advanced aspect which is where i'm going to be including the hypostasis into this right so far i'm kind of not talking about that um so, first of all, what is a hypostasis? Let me give you the basic definition and the advanced definition. Um, because both are, both are really acceptable definitions, but they're different, right? The basic definition is hypostasis is just nature with particular characteristics. Okay. Um, if you just say hypostasis is all that, right? We could say it's that because, you know, who am I? I'm David, right? I am a man, right? I am man. I refers to hypostasis. I am man. I am David, particular characteristic one. I am Christian, particular characteristic number two. I am Turkish, particular characteristic number three. I am white skin, particular characteristic number four. I am tall, blah, 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 right? But um, then, right, then, but is that all I am, right? For example, 10 years ago, I didn't have those part. I didn't have some of those particular characteristics. So, for example, I wasn't tall back then. I wasn't. A Christian 10 years ago so there's something that changed about me but I am still the same person how is that even possible well, because there's a there's different aspects of the hypostasis that aspect that I described that could be it kind of describes kind of the it's, it's a bit of a combination of um, how should I say the material aspect and the formal aspect of the hypostasis but then there is a the personal aspect the I the ego of a thing and so the advanced definition then that kind of capitulates all of this will be that hypostasis is the mode of existence. It is the foundation of existence where natures and their, their um, <clears throat> accrued properties manifest and exist. It exists in the hypostasis and it is where natures come to unite and exist and or exist, I think more properly speaking. So that's what the hypostasis in an advanced definition is. I want to kind of keep this short because I still want to keep this a basic video, but these are important details to talk about. And so in the case of Christ, he is hypostatically united to two natures, divine nature and human nature. Now he assumes human nature in its fullness. And as St. Maximus, the confessor says at the same time, it's very important. Christ is divine by hypostasis, but human by nature, because Christ does not have a human hypostasis, right? He does not have a, um, which is an historic position, is that, the, is that Christ has a human hypostasis after the union. But Christ is also, he is composite, but in what way? He is composite hypostasis in the sense that, what is it composed of? Well, it's composed of two natures. That's what is composite about him. But he's not composed of hypostases, okay? <clears throat> and in fact, the kind of composite hypostasis in and of itself, understanding, is in monophysitism too. What you're going to be noticing is that Christ as a composite hypostasis is a view both in Nestorianism and in monophysitism. But this is not a view in Orthodox Christology. For us, Christ is a divine person. Right? He did not change into a human person. He adopted a human nature. He can be spoken of as a human person, sure, because he has human nature, but, but he's not a human hypostasis, as St. Maximus the Confessor says. And, you know, in, in St. Maximus's Christology, it's even more evident because he states that nomic willing, which is another topic, 
But no McBilling is proper to a created human hypostasis. If Christ was a had a created human hypostasis, well, it seems pretty obvious that he will have no McWill, but he doesn't, right? So even though he is a composite hypostasis, he the, again the comp compositeness is of the divine nature and human nature, not of a divine hypostasis and human hypostasis. And this makes a lot of things very clear about um, first our relationship between hypostasis and nature and how we understand these things. And finally, I want to say that if we make the error of failing to distinguish between nature and person, well, we run into Christological errors. What, right? Nestorianism, in failing to preserve this distinction, tries to defend two natures. And so they fall into heresy of two persons. Monophysites, on the other hand, try to defend his single personhood, and they fall into the error of speaking of only one nature. Sure, they might have people like John Philoponus trying to defend themselves, saying that, well, uh, he's a composite nature. So the, the composite nature is human nature and divine nature. Well, then he's two natures. I mean, it seems pretty logical if they are fully, right, if those two natures that are composite as one nature still retain their full characteristics, then there are still two natures, right? Um, and secondly, if we're speaking of nature, you know, a, a, compo a composite nature can only be consubstantial with another con composite nature. That's another problem as well. Um, so there is no composite divine human nature that uh, Christ is a part of, that anyone else can be, a, be consubstantial with. Christ is double homoousion. This is why he's two natures, because he's consubstantial with two essences, right? Human essence and divine essence. And lastly, if there was no proper distinction preserved, we will fall into the heresy of Tritheism or Sabellianism, right? Different forms of heresies, where we will have to state that the Trinity that the, the hypostases and natures in the Trinity have to be numerically identical. identical. So if there's three hypostases, there has to be three natures, which means there are three gods, or there has to be one nature and one hypostasis in the Trinity. Um, orthodoxy, again, by making a distinction between hypostasis and nature, does not fall into this heresy. And this is why both our Trinitarian theology and our Christology are consistent and orthodox. And this is why our theology is the way, really, the way it is. And that's what I want to finish this video off with, with as well. If you want more, a more detailed breakdown, I, you can listen to the videos that I will put in the description below. You can watch them. But I hope it helps you understand Orthodox Christology as compared to other Christ Christologies. And... If you like this video, share, like it, subscribe to my channel, you know the drill. And I will see all of you in the next video. Mo next video is most likely going to be on the Tome of Leo. Um, and it's going to be a great video, right? So I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. May God be with you all. Uh, goodbye.